KVGC News Time is now seven minutes after the hour. Time for a look at the latest on the local scene. Well, to start the news this morning, Highway 26 is closed. Uh, McCallum Hill, Highway 49, down 26. And uh, apparently it's been closed since yesterday for what uh, Caltrans is reporting as police activity. Police activity. It was closed at Paloma Road. Uh, on the, um, I guess we'll call it the west end of 26 yesterday, uh, starting at about 4.30. And we do have confirmed reports from both Tony Boitano and Beth Stanton that uh, 26 is closed again today at uh, in both directions, from McCallamy Hill uh, going west and from Paloma coming east on 26, so be aware of that. Also, a full fleet of fire engines rolled into Jackson Saturday morning to the report of both the smell and the sight of smoke at the Wells Fargo Bank in Jackson. Crews were on scene for a short time before they determined it was uh, nothing too serious. It was an electrical unit that was causing the smoke. They had it cleared from the building, and uh, engines were released a short time later. Well, Argonaut and Amador students, big winners in the statewide Student Voices video campaign and were honored this past weekend at the Bay Area Arts Summit held in Oakland. Now, the Argonaut video, directed by junior Sophie Evans and sophomore and Amador art student director Deja Douglas, was awarded first place. The Amador video was awarded third, directed by juniors Lulu Briggs and Emily Ann Hopkins, along with senior Sid Cohen, all of whom our student directors with Amador Arts. Megan O'Keefe of the Amador Alliance for Arts Education and program, uh, program coordinator of Amador Arts was instrumental in motivating the students to create the videos and enter the contest. Additionally, Briggs, Douglas, and Hopkins were featured speakers at the Bay Area Arts Summit. These students from both Amador and Argonaut worked together with the Amador Alliance for Arts Education to get the Declaration of Equity in Arts Learning adopted by the Amador County Unified School District back in January. According to O'Keefe, across the state, the Amador Alliance for Arts Education, in collaboration with Amador County Unified School District leaders, being used as a model of success. As the partnership moves forward to develop a district-wide art plan, Tara Forget, Executive Director of Amador Arts, says the district has been hugely supportive of the program and has made exemplary progress this year to support arts education. And the Amador County Upcountry Community Council will host a question and answer session this evening featuring the candidates for District 3 Supervisor. Incumbent Lynn Morgan and challenger Jeff Brown will both be on hand to answer questions and discuss concerns of upcountry residents. Tonight's question and answer session will be part of the uh, Upcountry Community Council's regular meeting. It all starts at 6 o'clock at the Veterans Hall on Buckhorn Ridge Road. If you'd like more information about this topic, please call 295-5456. Well, need help filing your federal and state income taxes? The eBus will be in Jackson today and tomorrow providing free tax preparation to those who earn $54,000 or less. Sponsored by the Amador Tuolumne Community Action Agency, the bus will be staffed with IRS certified volunteer income tax assistance preparers who complete returns and check to see if taxpayers qualify for the expanded cash back California income or excuse me, California earned income tax credit. Now the bus, which is equipped with computer workstations, will be parked at Jackson Creek Plaza. Appointments available from 10 to 6 today and tomorrow for an appointment. Call the ATCA tax line at 283-4021. ACART, which is the Amador County Animal Response Team, will meet Wednesday evening. ACART is an all-volunteer nonprofit organization dedicated to helping provide a safe and secure sheltering environment for animals and livestock during the times of fire and other disasters. This month, Dr. Tim Perano will talk on recognizing and treating stress and illness in pigs. The group's meetings and ongoing training are scheduled the second Wednesday of each month, 6.30, at the American Legion Training Room on Sutter Hill. You can visit the ACART website, which is amadoranimalresponse.org, or call 257-4907 for more information and on how to become a member. 
And April is Child Abuse Prevention Month, and the Amador Child Abuse Prevention Council bringing awareness to adverse childhood experiences in trauma-informed care. Here's how you can help and participate. Wednesday the 18th, working toward a trauma-informed Northern California at the Sacramento Child Abuse Prevention Council offices. Thursday the 19th, Kids Day at the State Capitol. Saturday the 21st, celebrate our children at Argonaut High School from 11 to 2. Thursday the 26th, the Children's Flag Raising Ceremony at 1030 at the CAPC office on Broadway and Jackson. And all month long, visit the Pinwheel Garden at the CAPC offices, 975 Broadway, here in Jackson. And Knitting for a Cause, the ACPAC collecting hand-knit or crocheted purple caps to help spread the word about the period of purple crying. You can find starter yarn and info here at the radio station. For more information, call the Amador Child Abuse Prevention Council, 223-5921, or online. Visit AmadorCAPC.org. And Pacific Gas and Electric and Vulcan Construction have begun a year-long gas line replacement project throughout the city of Jackson. The projects include gas main line and service line replacement. Now, at various times throughout this project, traffic control measures and potential closures, if needed, will be in place. And during these closures, only residents, business, emergency, construction, and city vehicles will have access to the areas. And if your neighborhood will be affected, PG&E will be notifying you with door tags and uh, going door-to-door with updates uh, well in advance of any impact the service will have on you. Now, today and tomorrow, PG&E and Vulcan will be closing portions of Perry Street to through traffic. This closure will be in place between Schober Avenue and Oloida Street. All non-residents in this area will be required to select an alternate route. And that's a quick look at local news on a gold country. Monday morning. From the KVGC News Center, I'm J.D. And I'm Jim Geedy reporting. For the latest news, traffic, and weather 24 hours a day, you can always visit our website, kvgcradio.com.